Years later, it's a series where I take a look back on past pop culture and cinema and see if films that are 10 or more years older still hold up. Today's episode will be on Stan Army. It was released on August 20th, 1986. So, does it hold up? What year is it? Whoa, what? Thursday. <gasps> what year? No. What? Year is it? This is a movie that I did not know was based on a Stephen King novel or book. And with that knowledge, I thought there was going to be some weird stuff or just gnarly stuff because, like, the It book. It's a big, thick, fat book, right? But there's some weird stuff in it, like mainly the orgy stuff. Like, why did he write that? It turns out he was, like, hiring cocaine or doing crack or something. He was on something. But if he wrote during that era where he's just writing and writing really quickly, by the way, I was like, okay, this movie might not be. But no, this movie is actually something that's, like, super relatable and actually has me thinking of fond memories back when I was, like, a little kid as well. Film about about four boys of uh, their childhood friends and it's still being told by Gordy who's now like a writer and has a family and everything. We're hearing this story from his perspective. The four boys names are Gordy, Chris, Corey Feldman, and Vern. I'm gonna call Teddy his name but I'm gonna call him Corey Feldman because it's Corey Feldman. They want to find a dead body because there's a dead body in the missing case of this little boy and within this time frame they find out things about themselves and what they want to do in life after this little adventure that they have which is like two days by the way and the parents don't care. Like I think Gordy and Chris's parents they do not give a fuck about them whatsoever. They're just like, you know what? You guys do your thing. We don't really care about you. The other boys, I don't think we find out about them. Corey Feldman's father is very abusive. I still loves him, which Gordy is very confused about because, like, he hits you. But, you know, it's still family. But it hurts because it's family. That's, like, the main general plot. And I guess what makes this movie kind of relatable and what makes him very much love this movie are the characters in between the whole middle section. I pretty much like, yes, this is stuff that I probably would have done as a kid with my friends, my childhood friends, just being like, hey, let's go do something stupid and get hurt for it. Like, this is what this movie is. But of dumb kids making dumb decisions almost getting killed and it's a miracle that they didn't die going out and finding this dead oh man you should have seen your face damn that was cool was really fine. So Chris is the leader of this group and he's the one that has the most kind of history and baggage in this town because in this town his family has a history of being a low life kind of person mentality and gang and he has to carry that burden in this town so when everyone looks at him they're just like yeah you're a low life kid something along those lines and throughout the film he reveals to Cordy that he doesn't want to be known like this he wants to do something else he wants to go outside of this town Castle Rock and he wants to do bigger and better things and not have to be stuck really get out of that mentality because he starts crying at Gordy saying that he doesn't want to be known like this shown his vulnerability only to gordy not the other boys have this connection in this film both gordy and chris because they only talk about each other about how they're actually feeling and whatnot the other boys you know they're just friends as well which i do find interesting he wants to be something else but however he can't get out of this mentality he is who he is because of what's you know around him and that's all he knows and gordy kind of there just being like hey i'm a writer i can tell you a good story coming to college with me and whatnot he's a pretty good character wanting to prove to everyone in this town and just himself and his friends be like hey i can do something way bigger something way better and i guess in terms of leader i guess he's good because he's he saves Corey Feldman from killing himself. He wants to really be in front of a train and move like the flash or something. He's like, no, you can't move that fast if a train is coming that fast. And he saves him from that and everything. But he is still a kid. And there are moments like, hey, guys, let's go into this lake. Turns out there's leeches. And that leech scene, man, when Gordy, oh, God, I remember being like, oh, hell no. He fainted. Anyways, Chris has shown in some parts and some bits and pieces in this film that he is a leader without having this baggage of being a low life. person. Vern is just the fat one. He's like the chubby kid that's funny, that's super naive, that's oblivious to everything. Always trying to say something nice, but the other friends are like, shut up, Vern. And then another moment of these kids not knowing what the hell they're doing. They're working on the train tracks and then that brain moment. that I first saw in Family Guy. Again, Family Guy and other shows, I just see these references to like other movies and pop culture. But this train moment where he's just willing to just basically die because he's so scared. Like he's just a scared little boy. He's only friends with the kids of his age. There's probably no other kids his age. And most of the time, I feel like he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. He's like the safe person too. Like there's that moment of like, hey, let's go this route to the leech's pool or the train tracks. He always chooses a safe route, but like, nah, stop being a wuss. And they start going in there and he doesn't want to be left behind. Honestly though, I'm kind of more like Vern. Stop being a pussy. Come on, do these things please he does go through with it and has fun he just kind of there for the adventures of having fun and so he is a funny character again i think his trait is just chubby i will remember him for being chubby that's really it and super naive and kind of his kindness and his willingness to do different routes but because of being pressured like you know what all right i'll go along i'll be friends with you guys and hopefully not die teddy no uh -uh. i'm gonna dodge it 
Okay, Cole Feldman's character is probably the most broken. Well, him and Chris are probably the most kind of broken in terms of having a kind of a bad background and a bad upraising. Where his father abused him. Whenever they go into like this junkyard and that owner knows every one of their parents, he mentions his father and he wants to defend his father despite abusing him. Gordy's even like, why does he love his father so much? Want to protect his father so much even though he abuses him. And at the end of the day, it's still family. Yes, his father abused him, but you are blood. What, you know, things to change, but sometimes greed or stress or whatever overtakes that and his father just abuses and it kind of shows a lot for his character because he still loves his father despite all the abuse and the hating he's been given and he's also that kid that wants to be something that he's not again that train moment thing and i think there's a dialogue near the end of the movie where he wanted to join the army or military but because of his hair and his you know glasses he can't join and again he's just that type of character that type of person to be like i want to be you know this person but he's really not he is just average he wants to prove to himself and there's just kids learning stuff doing dangerous adventure things that they're not supposed to not being supervised by their parents at all whatsoever he is i guess the best character because one is Corey feldman and two it's really good he is the one that shows the most emotion aside from chris as well and then lastly gordy himself he is the writer he is the one telling this story he's the one that's like doesn't want to be there but he's only there because of the death of his brother his parents care more about his brother his older brother than him shown throughout the movie super messed up parents stephen king likes writing super messed up parents by the way just notice that it this one wouldn't be surprised if i watched his other films or adaptations there be messed up parents dead brother mirrors what's going on and finding this dead body whenever they do find it it reminds him being like he feels useless he feels like he was a mistake and his parents clearly don't care about him whatsoever but again because him and chris have this friendly bond and connection he's there to console and be like you know everything's gonna be all right you're needed you're ready he's a great storyteller because he does his one story in a campfire of lard ass wants to get his revenge on the people that he's been laughed at and so he drinks like wine or something and in his pie eating contest gross and disgusting and then what's even more gross him throwing up and then causing a chain reaction of throwing a fat lady barfed in her purse. The Donnelly twins barfed on each other. And not within this story. And I thought this story was going to be kind of boring, but the way that Gordy told it, damn fascinating story and kind of messed up gross story, is he's a really good storyteller. I do feel that this is kind of Stephen King writing himself. That there's got to be, I don't know, if you're a writer writing book, you got to write yourself at some point or write a writer within a writer story. I'm assuming it's kind of this, being like Gordy is him kind of ish. But Gordy is a good storyteller. And that lard ass story is pretty good, pretty damn entertaining and good. He's also the one that stands up to these bullies or like one of his. His brother's friends other side plot of like this secret that these friends or older kids have and i thought the secret was that this kid turns out they just know where the body is these two storylines of the little kids are main four and the older kids clashing at each other near the end and he has a gun because of chris which again adds on to the whole fact he's a low life father's gun tricks him into like shooting a bullet in town but he's the one that shoots off and scares away the older kids standing up for himself his show of like he's moved past this hopefully he can move on and do better things as well so going on his adventure with his friends he's realized that he is worth something and not just because because his parents don't really care about him he is worth being a writer and telling stories not only to himself to his friends but maybe to the rest of the world so he can you know make bank off of it i do like his dialogue and sentiment near the end where all the four friends go their separate ways he says that some friends they just kind of drift apart people they just come and go in out of your life which is true like there are friends in high school that i don't see anymore and it's not because i don't like them or anything it's just because we just kind of drifted apart we don't really see each other there's no reason for us to like call each other in a way i don't dislike them i like them as of right now i don't necessarily need to see them and that's just something that's very true Gordy doesn't really see Vern and Corey Feldman anymore. They do their own separate things. Apparently, Vern has a family now with four kids. Corey Feldman is doing other jobs. He can't be in the military because of his hair and glasses. And for Chris, he did prove that he wasn't just a low-life kid. He went out, got a job, became a lawyer, but died because of it. He got throat slit, and so he did go to college with Gordy. And then that's where the story ends for the rest of his friends. And then we cut to the present where Gordy is writing on his computer, writing a story about him and his friends, how they almost died, but they didn't, which is a miracle because of his own and the movie ends in this shot again for a song in family guy ends with the stand by me music which i was expecting this movie's called stand by me they have to include you know the song and they include it in the credits that was stand by me it's a movie again that's super relatable that teaches you hey you know what there's some people in your life in your childhood or in school you'll just i never see them again and that's fine it's also like a reminder of how dumb i was when i was a kid like i don't picture a kid now that's like five years old going out and playing outside they're just watching youtube because i remember distinctively i used to play outside a lot and then when the iphone 4 came out 
now, that was around like 2008, 2009, I started playing outside less and less and started watching on my sister's iPhone 4 on YouTube or whatnot. It's just a reminder of that bringing back very fond memories. And I don't know, I just, I really like that part of the movie. And you know, kids are dumb. Essentially, they could have died honestly multiple times. Leeches, that gun, the older kids, the train. So in the end, Stand By Me, 35 years later, still holds up. It's still a movie that teaches you a lot and it's still a pretty damn good movie. So that's it for me. This has been The Road So Far and thank you for watching.